guys what's up welcome back to my channel so i haven't been uploading any videos since two weeks ago three weeks ago i've been like crazy busy with my schedules and stuff but i'm here again so if you're by the cat channel i be sure to subscribe but i i can upload new videos every week and today's video berkisarkan tentang the romeo and juliet version punk rock well as you guys know romeo and juliet is not a real person or ada yang kata sebenarnya romeo and juliet berkisarkan tentang um william shakespeare's punya lover which is a guy but kita tahu kesahihannya but as of now let's just assume that romeo and juliet sebenarnya uh, watak dongeng dalam cerita william shakespeare's but the Romeo and Juliet yang I nak ceritakan tentang today it actually happens in the 1970s yes it's about Sid Vicious and Nancy Spungen so if you guys curious gila apa jadi dengan diorang berdua ni so stay tuned keep on watching and don't forget to subscribe cerita hari ni berkisarkan tentang Sid Vicious Seorang basis dan juga penyanyi daripada kumpulan Sex Pistols. Sid telah dipercayai membunuh girlfriend dia sendiri, Nancy Spungen, dekat Chelsea Hotel, Oktober 1978. However, sebenarnya masa dia dipercayai membunuh Nancy Spungen, dia sebenarnya di bawah pengaruh dadah dan alkohol. So, he never really knew himself whether he really stabbed Nancy or he didn't. Pada Oktober 1978, mayat Nancy Spungen ditemui di bawah Sinki Hotel Chelsea, bilik 100. Mayat dia dijumpai oleh Sid sendiri. And on that day, hanya Sid sahaja yang berada dekat dalam bilik tu berdua dengan Nancy. So, um, dia lebih kepada Sid lah yang membunuh Nancy sebenarnya. But stay tuned sebab ada lagi teori conspiracy about this. So let's just jump right in dekat siapa sebenarnya Sid and apa asal-usul dia. Sid Vicious atau nama sebenarnya John Simon Ritchie berasal daripada London. Dia dilahirkan pada 10 Mei 1957. His mom was a school dropout, dia masuk British Army and then dia jumpa husband dia yang bekerja as Buckingham Palace Guards and the husband also merupakan trombone player. So, dia orang sepatutnya pindah ke Ibiza bersama-sama. However, um, they decided that bapak dia ada kerja lagi. So, sit dengan mak dia je yang pindah ke Ibiza. Setelah sekian lama, Bapak Sid tak bagi check untuk Sarah, Sid and mak dia. So, mak dia decided that, um, you know, the marriage ain't working out. So, they split up. So, mak Sid and Beverly, she married Christopher Beverly, who died six months later disebabkan cancer. And then, Anne perlukan duit untuk Sarah dia dengan Sid. So, dia decide to sell marijuana. So Sid went to school and then afterwards he masuk college. He went to Hackney Technical College where he met dia punya bandmate and best friend yang bernama John Lydon. John Lydon ni quite famous juga lah dulu. Until now I think if you're into rock, punk rock, um, he was also known as Johnny Rotten if you ever heard of him and he became Sid's best friend. So John Lydon, dia ada pet hamster tau. So nama pet hamster dia Sid. Um, one day bila si John Simon Ritchie tengah main dengan hamster John Lydon, hamster tu gigit tangan John Simon Ritchie. And afterwards, um, dia terus frantically jerit, Sid is so vicious! Ataupun dalam bahasa Melayu dia, Sid ni terlampau garang, brutal. So, padahal bagi John Lydon, sebenarnya the hamster is a very sweet and caring pet. So, uh, dia jadikan bahan gelak. And nama tu seems quite cool. So, dia namakan John Simon Ritchie as... Sid Vicious. 
So guys, sebenarnya kehidupan John Simon Ritchie ni is quite sad sebab mak dia sendiri berkecimpung dalam golongan yang kurang baik lah. Meaning, mak dia seorang penagih. Mak dia ketagih heroin. And how sad it is for him, John Lydon pernah bagi tahu that at the age of 16, mak dia bagi heroin kit untuk birthday present dia sendiri. I mean guys, kalau mak orang yang normal will be like, kau nak ke? Okay. But, and Beverly had nothing to offer dia punya anak for birthday present. So, they decide to bagi Sid heroin. And, ever since, Sid pun berkecimpung juga dengan dadah mainly heroin. So, in 1977, John Simon Ritchie atau Sid Vicious decided untuk masuk group uh, John Lydon as a basis uh, menggantikan one of their basis yang tidak disukai dekat dalam group tu apparently. So, yeah, dia jadi basis Sex Pistols pada 1977. Tapi sebenarnya before that lagi, dia merupakan seorang drama Pada kumpulan Seal Sex Seal Sex I don't know how to pronounce it but This is how it is spelled Orang yang betul-betul personally kenal dia cakap He's such a sweet guy Dia memang jenis very caring Very supportive Very funny Tapi sebenarnya apa yang dia portray dekat public Is totally different from how people portray him because he seems to be very blunt, very violent, very reckless and also very dumb. Actually, the press lah banyak cakap macam tu. Also, his fans sebab dia macam reckless sangat. Macam violent, you know what I mean, right? Anyhow, let's get to who is Nancy Spanjin pula. So, Nancy Laura Spanjin Dia lahirkan pada 27 Februari 1958, one year younger daripada Sid Vicious. Dia merupakan anak sulung Deborah Spanjen and Frank Spanjen. Dia merupakan anak sulung kepada pasangan tersebut dan mempunyai dua orang adik, satu lelaki dan seorang perempuan. Dia berasal daripada Philadelphia. Masa dia lahir, sebenarnya dia tak cukup oksigen and that was caused sebab dia punya umbilical cord tercekik. And that was because she was choked on her own umbilical cord. But afterwards, she was not diagnosed with any brain damage or any trauma and so on and so forth. He macam a normal baby afterwards. Cuma mak dia kata she always cry. Like literally she grew up so angry. Mak dia pun tak tahu kenapa sebenarnya. Bapak dia Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Bukan. Frank Spanjin merupakan seorang salesman while Deborah dulu dia seorang student afterwards dia kerja as a um, saleswoman juga tapi dekat uh, barang dia menjual barang-barang organik mak dia kata she grew up as a very difficult child she was very violent pernah sekali guys umur 11 tahun Dia threaten untuk bunuh dia punya own babysitter dengan gunting. Selain tu, how violent she is, she pernah nak pukul dia punya psychiatrist. And at the age of 11, dia dah dibuang sekolah sebab dia selalu ponting. So, dia ditukar sekolah. And after dia tukar sekolah, pada umur 14 tahun, Dia, lari, dia keluar lari daripada sekolah tu and cuba membunuh diri dengan mengelar tangan dia menggunakan gunting. Pada umur 15 tahun, dia dah didiagnose oleh psychiatrist dia as mengidap severe schizophrenia and that resulted her to be very difficult to be dealt with. However, she turns out to be a very bright kid sebab afterwards, dia graduate high school pada age 16 je and at the same year, dia masuk University of Colorado Boulder. Tapi, how ruined of her again 
After 5 months to 6 months, dia, dia masuk university tu. Dia ditangkap sebab purchasing marijuana. And afterwards, dia juga ditangkap mencuri daripada university dia. And dia dibuang daripada university. Papa dia terpaksa pergi Colorado untuk accept her plea bargain. And afterwards, dia dibuang daripada negeri Colorado. She was so young, umur 16 tahun. Nancy, Nancy. And at the age of 17, she decided that she's so into punk and she wants to discover her true self. So she went to New York and joined a groupie. They equaled several groups such as the Heartbreakers and the Dolls. So untuk win one of the group band members daripada the Dolls, dia pergi ke London. But apparently, she crossed path with Sid Vicious and they immediately fall in love. Tak adalah immediately. Sebenarnya, dia aing for Johnny Rotten tapi dia dapat Sid Vicious. So, she just grabbed that opportunity. So apparently, Sid is head over heels dekat Nancy and Nancy as well. However, she is sort of the Yoko Ono for the Sex Pistols. She is the Courtney Love for Nirvana. But mainly, she's Nancy's pungeon for the Sex Pistols because the group mates doesn't like Nancy because she's always just there. Dia macam ni buang. Uh, she always wants to steal the light so the media people call her nauseating Nancy atau disgusting Nancy sebab she's just so loud and she's always cursing selalu mencarut and she's also violent so yeah however um, after the sex pistols split up See, Sid decided that Nancy should be his manager and they settled down dekat Hotel Chelsea, Bilik 100. Hotel Chelsea tu sebenarnya some place yang sangat disgusting because there's always trash everywhere and even John Lydon sendiri cakap you don't want to live there sebab um, at that one level dekat Hotel Chelsea, you can even get robbed. So it's like when you live there, it's like you're asking for trouble. However, ada juga several renowned artists such as Madonna, such as Patti Smith sendiri yang duduk dekat Hotel Chelsea tu. And so does John Lydon and Nancy Spongeon and Sid Vicious. So one fine day in 1978, bulan Oktober, um, Sid was very high. And after dia bangun, tiba-tiba dia nampak there's a lot of blood and Nancy is under the kitchen with satu tusukan uh, pisau dekat perut Nancy and she's not breathing. So, he, imedi he immediately called the police and when the police came, he was just wandering on the corridor like cluelessly. Macam, how could this happen? Am I the killer? Because he was really stoned. So he do, he doesn't even know what happened. And sebabkan the pisau actually belongs to Sid and dalam bilik tu hanya Sid dengan Nancy saja. So Sid was taken as person of interest inside the case. Sid pula macam somewhat like provoking himself saying that I stabbed her but I don't want her dead. After dia dilepaskan, dia decided to kill himself dengan slit dia punya wrist. However, that did not kill him. So, dia masuk dekat hospital and he shouted sambil like nak terjun daripada tingkap saying that I want to be with my Nancy. And after dia discharge, dia pergi bar celebrate dengan one of his friends tapi dia assault abang Patty Smith and dia masuk penjara so after dia keluar penjara ada satu interview and I'm just gonna put it here yeah and what do you think made it happen 
It was meant to happen. Nancy always said she'd die before she was 21. <coughs> What would you like to happen now over the next, say, year or two? I'd like to have fun. What sort of fun? Any kind of fun, just fun. That's my object in life. Are you having fun at the moment? Are you kidding? Oh, I'm not having fun at all. Where would you like to be? Under the ground. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. After the club penjara, too, he straightly went back to his friend's apartment to get stone and mark the sendiri yang bagi the heroine. And the next couple of hours, he was found dead on the bed. Tak bernafas. He OD'd and died. And this was on second February which is 25 days before Nancy's birthday. So guys, afterwards, ada yang cakap sebenarnya bukan Sid yang bunuh Nancy. Sebenarnya ada satu pengedar dadah ni yang bunuh Nancy sebab she's been really annoying. So he killed Nancy. And Sid tak boleh buat apa-apa because he wants more drugs. Ada yang cakap macam tu. But ada juga yang cakap sebenarnya Nancy killed herself for attention. And ada yang juga cakap sebenarnya yang bunuh Nancy memang Sid. Sebab uh, before that, he was arguing with Nancy about something. So, I don't know guys. What do you think? Who killed Nancy's bungee? What are your own theories? So, tell me in the comment down below. And that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you on the next video.